Hi friends, today we're going to read Little Rabbit's Kwanzaa, written by Donna Washington and illustrated by Shane Evans. If you want to take an error test on this story, you're welcome to type in the title or this code, 143063. All right, here we go. Little Rabbit was not having a very good Kwanzaa. Being the littlest rabbit in the family wasn't easy. He couldn't remember the names of all the days. He wasn't allowed to light the candles. His brothers and sisters made wonderful gifts to share. Little Rabbit was too embarrassed to share his gifts. He hated being the youngest. He was always in the way, and everyone told him he was too little to help. Poor Little Rabbit. The only part of Kwanzaa that he really loved was the big feast called Karamu. This year, he wasn't even going to have that. Grandma Rabbit was sick. She lay in bed all day drinking dandelion tea. Mama Rabbit was so busy taking care of her, she didn't have time to cook. Mama, if Grandma Rabbit is sick, who will make the feast of Karamu? Little Rabbit asked his mother. Shame on you, Little Rabbit, his mama said. Grandma Rabbit is sick and all you think about is your stomach. You go outside. Little Rabbit hopped out and sat on the big gnarled tree stump. He really wanted to go and talk to Grandma Rabbit. She was very wise. Little Rabbit sat and thought. He thought about all the things his Grandma said about Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa is a special time when we help each other. That's what Grandma Rabbit said. That's it! Little Rabbit jumped up and danced around. I'll bring Grandma Rabbit a special treat for Karamu. That will make her feel better. Little Rabbit hopped down the road. Where are you going so fast? Mama Oriole asked Little Rabbit. I'm going to find a tasty treat for Grandma Rabbit. She's sick. I want her to have a good Karamu. Little Rabbit hopped away. Mama Oriole didn't know what Karamu was, but she knew Grandma Rabbit. Grandma Rabbit always brought out warm seed cakes and worm pudding when the weather got cold. Poor Grandma Rabbit, said Mama Oriole. I wish there was something I could do to help. Little Rabbit stopped by the side of the patch. He looked under some logs to see if he could find something special for Grandma Rabbit. What are you doing, Little Rabbit? asked Groundhog, sticking his head out of the patch of grass. I'm trying to find a zawadi for Grandma Rabbit. She's sick. I want her to feel better, Little Rabbit hopped off. Groundhog didn't know what a zawadi was, but he knew Grandma Rabbit. She always had time to make little toys for the animals when they were bored. Poor Grandma Rabbit, said Groundhog. I wish there was something I could do to help. Little Rabbit hopped down to the pond. Maybe he could find something pretty for Grandma Rabbit. What are you doing, Little Rabbit? asked the frogs. I'm looking for something pretty for Grandma Rabbit. She's sick. She should have something pretty to hang on the wall at Kwanzaa time. Little Rabbit scratched an ear and hopped away. The frogs didn't know anything about Kwanzaa time, but they knew Grandma Rabbit. She could paint beautiful pictures and write wonderful poems. Poor Grandma Rabbit, said one of the frogs. I wish there was something we could do to help. Little Rabbit hopped through the field looking for berries. Where are you going, Little Rabbit? Mama Field Mouse asked. She was dragging all of her children behind her. Grandma Rabbit is sick, said Little Rabbit. I'm going to make sure she has a good Karamu. I'm going to find as many berries as I can. Little Rabbit looked proud as he hopped through the meadow. Mama Field Mouse didn't know anything about Karamu, but she knew Grandma Rabbit. Grandma Rabbit helped out with the children when Mama Field Mouse had to run errands. Poor Grandma Rabbit, said Mama Field Mouse. I wish there was something I could do to help. Little Rabbit scampered through the trees. Good morning, Little Rabbit, said Papa Squirrel. Where are you sniffing around the trees? I'm looking for something to give Grandma Rabbit. She's sick. I want her to have a good Kwanzaa. Little Rabbit hopped away. Papa Squirrel didn't know anything about Kwanzaa, but he knew Grandma Rabbit. She always helped him gather nuts in the fall. She even helped him remember where he hid them. Poor Grandma Rabbit, said Papa Squirrel. I wish there was something I could do to help. Little Rabbit spent the whole day trying to find something for Grandma Rabbit. He searched as hard as he could, but he didn't find anything at all. He was very sad. I guess I'm too little to do anything. As the sun was setting, he hopped slowly home. When he opened the door, he had a huge surprise. Can you guess what it is? Everyone was there. Grandma Rabbit was sitting in the big chair with a huge smile on her face. The frogs had brought pink flowers from the lily pads. Mama and Papa Spider hung them from the ceiling like lanterns. Mama Oriole was conducting a fine chorus of birds. 
Groundhog brought little toys and gifts for everyone. Mama Field Mouse had gotten together with Mama Possum and Mama Raccoon to make a delicious feast. The air was full of excitement. Mama Rabbit served the plates and Little Rabbit ate until he thought he would burst. After that, Papa Rabbit told funny stories about Br'er Rabbit, a Nossie the spider. Hey, we know that story. Guinea fowl and mosquito. The stories made everyone laugh. Then Papa Spider plucked on his web strings, Cricket got out his fiddle, and all the animals had a wonderful dance. Granny Rabbit taught everyone a new word. Harumbe, she called out as her friends danced. It means let's pull together. We don't need anyone to tell us that, said Papa Squirrel. We already pulled together. Everyone laughed and shouted, Harumbe, Harumbe, Harumbe. When the karamu was over, Little Rabbit sat with his grandma in the big chair. Why are you so sad, Little Rabbit, his grandma asked. Didn't you have a good time? Yes, Little Rabbit said quietly, but I wanted to do something special for you. Granny Rabbit just laughed. You silly rabbit, she said, hugging Little Rabbit tight. If you hadn't gone off looking for Karamu this morning, it never would have found its way here tonight. Little Rabbit frowned. But I'm the only one who didn't have anything to share. His grandma smiled. You shared your dream, Little Rabbit, and your dream brought all of our friends and neighbors together. That's a big thing. Little Rabbit felt proud. My dream did all of that? Yes, I'm not surprised though, his grandma said. Why not, Little Rabbit asked. Because I have faith in you. If you have faith, Little Rabbit, there's always hope. Oh, I'll try to remember that, said Little Rabbit, yawning. By the way, said Grandma Rabbit, snuggling him close, this was the best Kuramu ever. I hope you enjoyed that special story, kiddos.